Welcome to AgriBaltech, an agricultural biotechnology program where the focus is on the significance of biotechnology to agricultural development in Nigeria. I am Lara Afolayo. Years after confined field trials for the BT Calpi began in Nigeria, promoters of biotechnology have made a public presentation on the BT Calpi to the National Bio Safety Management Agency. This is to allow for improved public awareness on the science behind the port borer resistant BT Calpi, which is the first genetically modified food crop awaiting commercial release in Nigeria. We shall be bringing you excerpts from that public presentation on today's program. But at this point, we bring to you trending agricultural biotechnology stories on what's new. A new report launched by the United Nations Development Programme UNDP at the Climate Conference in Poland has shown that Africa faces risks as global warming increases and urgent action needs to be taken across the continent to mitigate these risks and safeguard a decade of social and economic gains. The study shows that should the world fail to limit global warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius, Families would find it difficult to feed themselves, and the threats of famine as well as increased poverty will rise along with temperatures. Director of the UNDP's Africa Bureau adds that climate change, droughts, floods, changing rainfall patterns, and conflicts have the potential to unravel efforts to reduce hunger and achieve the goals outlined in the Paris Agreement and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. For two weeks, the Climate Conference brought together thousands of climate action decision makers, advocates and activists with one key objective, which was adopting global guidelines for the 197 parties of the 2015 Paris Agreement when countries committed to limiting global warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius and as close as possible to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Efforts to develop pearl millet with improved resistance to drought and blast disease recently received a major boost. The identification of promising introgression lines after multi-location trials will help accelerate development of new varieties and increase pearl millet production and productivity. Pearl millet is an important source of nutrition for millions of people in the drylands of sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. However, the pearl millet blast and extreme weather conditions are serious threats to its cultivation. This underlines the importance of identifying sources and breeding for drought and blast resistance. Scientists from the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics ICRISAT are addressing these challenges under the project tagged. Synthesis of new abiotic and biotic stress tolerance gene pool through introgression of alleles from wild species into pearl millet cultivars the project is supported by the Global Crop Diversity Trust and CGIAR Research Program on Green Legumes and Drylands Cereals. After more than 20 years of theorizing, scientists have tweaked a hybrid variety of rice so that some of the plants could produce duplicated seeds. The scientists say it is encouraging to efforts to feed on an increasingly crowded world. The study's co-author Davies Venkatesan Sanderson, a plant geneticist at the University of California, says the new lab version of hybrid rice could preserve those qualities through self-duplication. He says crossing two varieties of grain can make one fabulous one, so combining the best versions of genes could give crops desirable traits such as higher yields. But such hybrid grains often don't transfer the coveted genetic qualities to all seeds during reproduction. So farmers who want to consistently have higher yields have to pay for new hybrid seeds every year. Welcome back. 
As I said earlier, a public presentation on the BT Calpi has been made to the National Valve Safety Management Agency. This is coming ahead of the Variety's commercial release in Nigeria. Agribaltech was there. A public presentation of the BT Calpi to the National Bow Safety Management Agency, an agency responsible for regulating the deployment of agricultural bow technology in Nigeria. This follows confined field trials on the BT Calpi modified with the Bacillus thuringiensis gene, which have been conducted in Nigeria for nine years to fight the devastating Maruka pest. The agency's act requires that the public is knowledgeable on the basic science behind the port borer resistant cowpea and the bow safety measures put in place ahead of its commercial release. The objective of this presentation is to the following. For the applicant to take, stakeholders, to take stakeholders through the basic science of the genetically modified cowpea on other issues relevant to the safety of the gene of, the gene of insects the processes of the development of the genetically modified cowpea, the risk assessment, and the food, and food safety and environmental standards, safety measures carried out by the applicant. This is to enable stakeholders to gain a better understanding of the genetically modified cowpea and the biosafety measures in place, and to give stakeholders the opportunity to express their concerns and ask questions on the GM, the Scarly Modified Carpet. At the end of the presentation, there shall be a 21 day public notice in three national dailies and the agency's website on the application, indicating the location where the application dossier will be deposited to enable members of the public to review the application and present their views to the National Biosafety Management Agency. The National Biosafety Management Agency also, we also constitute a National Biosafety Committee and National Biosafety Technical Subcommittee of eminent experts, scientists to carry out detailed review of the risk assessment and risk management and recommend and make recommendations to guide the NDMA in its final decision making. Nigeria has the greatest potential to catch up with the uh, other developed countries of, of the world. We have the human capital, we have the environment, and all that it takes to be like Brazil, Argentina, and other uh, countries of, uh, of the world. Confined field trials for the BT Calpi project in Nigeria were conducted by the Institute for Agricultural Research of the Amadubili University in Zaria. The project's principal investigator now shares the variety of strengths with this gathering. We have succeeded not only verifying the efficacy of this, this uh, gene in Kaupi, but we did it in full compliance with the regulatory requirements. And then we bred it into, uh, the gene is also very efficacious against Mar Maruka in the field, <laughs> just as it was in the laboratory. And then farmers also like this new variety. I must add here, we have an ongoing process of developing a brown seeded version of it also. And um, the, this much economic benefit in terms of uh, billion, billions of Naira is expected. We found out that the BT gene is not homologous to any, any configuration of gene that can cause any allergenicity. That means that uh, whatever conventional cowpea gives you, you know, many people fat a lot uh, when they eat it. So this one wouldn't make you fat more than any ordinary cowpea will give you. So it's as safe as that also. The principal investigator and the National Biotechnology Development Agency also add that the BT Calpi has great economic benefit potentials for Nigeria. We, if we assume only 20% yield increase, okay, and uh, one out of three hectares of cowpea fields is planted to BT Calpi, we are going to earn about 
48 billion naira annually. And I see the margin increases with infestation of Maruka. The more Maruka you have, the more of this margin will accrue. This is in terms of yield only. But we have realized that the margin is much more than 20%. Now, another one is, instead of our eight or six sprays of insecticide, this new variety will require only two sprays of insecticide. And um, you reduce from six to eight liters to only two to three liters. The total benefit accruable is going to be around 16 billion naira annually from the savings of insecticides. This means that uh, it will be saved from our farmer's pocket and it will be saved from our foreign reserve also. Representatives of agencies which have signed Memorandum of Understanding with the National Bio Safety Management Agency and civil society groups are present here. The agency says it will carry out a thorough risk assessment of reports and findings from the BT Calpies confined field trials for national benefit. Next on the program, we take a short break. Agribiotech continues shortly. Do stay with us. Did you know that genetically modified organisms, GMOs, are safe and do not pose any risk, hazard, or danger to human, animal, and the environment? Neither do they cause cancer, infertility, sterility, tumor, or any adversity. The risk safe use of GMO drugs like insulin, vaccine, rapid diagnostic test kits for malaria, HIV, hepatitis, and so on. The safety of GMOs is certified by the World Health Organization, WHO, Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, European Food Safety Authority, EFSA, the National Academy Academies of Science Globally, the Royal Society, UK, and over 110 prize Nobel laureates, GMOs are safe, effective, and certified by MBMA in Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigeria chapter of the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAP, supported by the National Biotechnology Development Agency, NABDA. The International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, is a non-profit organization that conducts agricultural research for development in the drylands of Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. ICRISAT and its partners help empower the rural poor to eradicate poverty, hunger and a degraded environment through better agricultural practices. Agribiotech caught up with the country representative of ICRISAT in Nigeria, Dr. Akim Ajegbe, who shares his thoughts on the use of biotechnology for agriculture and why Nigeria needs this scientific innovation at this time. I'm a scientist, so genetic uh, is, 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 uh, is science, and I, I fully support it. Of course, we should not use it blindly, but once we have evidence that it's safe, it's effective, I'm for it. Um, copy is well loved by Nigerians, I mean, Maybe almost 100% of Nigerians eat cowpea. I've never come across anybody who does not. But the same thing is cowpea is also well loved by insects. At every stage of a cowpea, every stage, you have one or two major insects that can actually give you zero yield, can major. In addition, you have a lot of diseases. But luckily, and you also have striga. Luckily, Research has really done a lot. Practically, we have solved the, the issue of diseases. Most of the diseases has been solved. Striga is another big issue, and we have uh, varieties that are 100% Striga resistant. But we have a very big challenge with insects. 
very big challenge with inset. And um, the most reliable for now is to use insecticide. And sometimes you have to spray twice, you have to spray three times, four. <laughs> there are people who spray five times. Now, we, research has shown that um, some varieties are weak resistant. So those ones you can spray maybe two or three times. But then the spraying is an issue. You know, the danger of spray and all of those kind of things. The technical know-how of the, of, the, of the farmers, the hazard implication. So there are a lot of issues with spraying. Sometimes they will use, there even the, another problem of the chemical itself. You have a lot of adulterated or fake uh, uh, insecticide in, in, in the market. So there's all kind of big issues. Maruka, I think, is the most important, is the most devastating of all the insect pests. I mean, Maruka, you can easily get 100% uh, yield loss, easily. It's, it range from 60. Even a weak, weak uh, infestation, you'll, you'll get maybe up to, about 50% loss. So if it's moderate or high, you get 100%. And um, the unfortunate thing is, it will come when the thing is podding, you know, so you have done a lot of other agronomy activity. You have wasted a lot of money. And then what you are waiting, looking for is gone. So Maruka, next to Maruka is Paul Sokimbok. But Maruka is, is, I think, is number one. This is the thing that we should promote. I'm quite aware of it. I, I, when I was in IIT, I was quite involved. Because we, we in, in, instead of doing that, we were thinking of doing what we call interspecific hybridization. There is a wild variety. Actually, it's not the same variety. It's a wild species. So it's a related uh, um, um, crop. No, plant. Let's call it. It's not crop. It's also Vigna, Vesilata, that has a, a little bit of resistance to, to this Maruka. And even my MSC was on that. I tried to cross it using all kind of means with the cultivated cowpea, but I didn't succeed. I did more than 2,000 crosses. When it crossed, I got maybe like 0 0.02 because only about 20 were a bit successful. But even those ones died about uh, eight days after the cross. So that is not effective. Now, this BT is, is the next solution. And if we have BT cup if we promote it on a good genetic background. So that is, we get a cup variety that has resistant to a lot of these diseases and is resistant to striga. Then you bring the BT in it. You have a super cup. So it means instead of spraying five to six, seven times, you may need to spray only once. So once there is resistant to all of these and you're resistant to Maruka, then you are thinking of post-sucking bug. So you will have cut down spraying significantly, which is more environmental friendly than spraying five times. So BT, to me, is more environmental friendly than, than uh, the spray. So this is what the technology we should go for. The other thing is we should make sure it is against a very good uh, background. And science is taking care of that. Presently, I said the average yield is uh, 700. That is even when you spray, <laughs> by the way, when you spray maybe two eyes or something like that. If you don't spray, you can get zero yield. So now, if you have, let's assume now you don't spray. You don't spray. You have BT copy on a good background and you don't spray. Your yield can go to one ton. That in itself is, I mean, is money for the farmers is food for me and you. So it will contribute seriously to, significantly to the economy. And remember, once it's released, this is at no extra cost. So we look at it at that bank. So I will expect that the seed of the variety that has BT will be maybe 5% or 10% higher than those ones for a few years. But after that, it will be the same kind of uh, cost. So it will be no extra cost. 
So the, the returns on that investment is significant. It's funny, a lot of people who make statements, they are uninformed. That's the unfortunate thing. Now, i give you an example. Somebody who says don't use beat copy is, is dangerous. What is the basis? Can they bring scientific facts to show us the, uh, the, 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 the effect of, of, of it? As I said, yes, we should not use it blindly. But anyone where any, any crop, any situation where it is proven, we should use it. Look, whatever science does in terms of this genetic modification or genetic is what will eventually happen naturally. It may take thousands of years, millions of years, but it's what will... We, we don't create things. We work on the diversity. So whatever science does in terms of gene manipulation is what will happen eventually. What we have done as scientists is to ask the, 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 the time that will happen. So we do our selection. So this gene, of course, yes, it is toxic to Maruka. But they have seen the sample. It's not toxic to human being. At least it has not been proven. And then um, for me, it is better we take an uncertain risk and beautiful than take a certain risk of hunger. What is Nigeria population now? It's about 190 million. It is postulated that in the next 15 to 20 years, we will double. How do we feed those people? Are we going to feed them on uh, 700 kilograms per hectare? No, we have to use science. And one of that is this BT. Simple. I grew up in Kaduna. And I remember my dad was a, a driver in one of the textile companies. In Kaduna, there used to be about four or five, I think, or even more textile company. And in those days, by around five, you see people trooping up from those factories. Go there now, all closed. Why? We don't produce enough cotton. So this is a technology. Because cotton is also like, like a copy. They need to spray several times. So if we now have a variety, that you reduce that spray, what has it done? It has reduced cost of production. And if we now produce, increase the cotton production in Nigeria, uh, we're talking about unemployment. <laughs> this is something that we feed the industry. This is something we should be proud of, we should be pushing. Instead of creating jobs in China, we should create jobs in Nigeria. Now, these nitrogen efficient uh, rice varieties, what will happen? It will reduce the nitrogen needs of the farmer. So what has that done? It reduces cost of production. Simple. I'm involved in the ATAPS, Agricultural Transformation Support Project Phase 1. I am the sorghum commodity uh, uh, specialist for that. And we have, it's actually three commodities. We have rice, we have sorghum, we have cassava. And I can tell you, these three crops, if we put our acts together, in three, four years, we can produce enough for the country by using technology, using science. That's what all these other advanced countries are using, and that's why they are producing enough. They use science-based agricultural uh, production technology. That's all. So we have to use it. That was Dr. Akim Ajegbe, country representative of the International Crops Research Institute for the Semi-Arid Tropics, ICRISAT, there speaking on biotechnology and agriculture. And just before we go on the program today, let's quickly see a rally in Dawson Agricultural Biotechnology, which held at the Unity Fountain in Abuja, the Nigerian capital. A gathering aimed at publicizing the positives of using biotechnology for agriculture. The placards say it all. They highlight the benefits of this scientific innovation for agriculture. The inscriptions on the placards range from the fact that biotechnology cannot be removed from science. The GM cotton will awaken the textile industry 
the need to fund scientific research and create jobs, as well as the importance of adopting biotechnology. We've discovered this will give us uh, full sufficiency. It will help the economy. It will help the yield. So why, why oppose it? To what end? That's the question we have to, those are the questions we should ask ourselves. If, if you have to reduce the amount of uh, pesticides or insecticides you use, is it not better? These are chemicals that affect the pH of the soil. We are scientists, we understand what it is. We, we are talking about embracing science. If you are saying uh, you use less pesticides and less insecticides, is it not better for us? It's better for the soil, it's better for the health of the person applying those things. These are things that are inimical to health. The group also highlights how well biotechnology could help control pests and diseases attack on crops and how science serves the common good of man. What of the vaccines you take? They go directly to the blood. Food doesn't go directly to the blood. They are processed. The waste are extracted, then the useful parts are used. But you are talking of uh, insulin that goes straight into your bloodstream. You don't think about that. People who are against biotech use insulin. When they are sick, they take vaccines. These are biotech products. This gathering in support of agriculture and biotechnology is convened by the Real Life Humanitarian Foundation. The foundation feels Nigeria should not miss out of the use of biotechnology for agriculture. And from that rally, we come to the end of today's program. Send your emails to agribaltech1 at yahoo.com. Send us tweets at agribaltech13 or post comments on the Facebook page agribaltech on TVC. Let's do this again same time next week. I am Lara Folayan. Goodbye.